What is going on everyone? So I think it's about time that I made a PCB design rules video. And I've kind of been thinking about how I want to structure this little video series. Because if you take a look at the little design rules, you know, tab, this design rule uh, editor in Altium, and you see all these design rules, it, honestly, it's a little bit overwhelming. You kind of think, well, where do I even start? Like, what do these rules even mean? Like, how do, what, like how what do I even like what is the philosophy behind setting a rule and how do I even know what to set them as after I figure out what they mean and stuff like that so one of the ways I think I want to break mine down is if you've actually ever read if you read anything about you know PCB design online or there's actually this great book I'll I'll recommend um, maybe I'll link it in the description if I can find it online um, you'll kind of uh, read about there's there's several different like philosophies that PCB designers will kind of pull from when they are you know working on the designs and one of them is referred to as design for manufacturing or DFM for short if you've ever seen the acronym that's what that means basically what this is is these are this is the philosophy behind you know designing a board that actually can be manufactured by fabrication houses right so with the current technology available, it is physically possible to make this board. Um, that's basically what that means, right? So what we'll do is we'll, we're going to go through in this video, uh, we're going to go ahead and pick through all of the rules that I think um, kind of pull from that philosophy and will ensure that your board is manufacturable, right? So I think that's a great place to start. Um, and so see, see here, you, uh, if you see here, I have a whole list of all of the rules that we'll be kind of covering. And I'll say this is by no means, these nine are by no means an exhaustive list for DFM type rules. Um, but I think if you, you know, starting out right here, I think this is a great place to start, right? If you have these rules, um, this will definitely put you well on your way to making boards that are manufacturable. And you can just, this is, this is remember, remember kind of what I said uh, is it's also about just making incremental improvements in your design. It's not about, we're not trying to like get this all perfect in one shot, right? We're going to slowly watch our designs improve over time, and that's that's kind of where the magic happens. So what I'm going to do is I'll go through and I will explain what each rule is. Then I will kind of give an example of like the rule being violated and, and show you an actual, you know, on the PCB example. And then I will show you where to go like online to find information on about how to set this rule. And then I will finally show you what I set each rule as personally. Um, so without further ado, I guess we'll just jump right into the first one, right? So the first one is trace width, and you can actually go on Altium's website, and if you just look right here in this little section, they have um, it, it's in the PC, it's in the preferences and references section. So a lot of time you'll be reading around the exploring Altium designer section, but if you go down here, preferences and references, uh, they have all of the rules where they actually define them as right. So that's what we'll be reading from a lot today. So if you look at trace width, the first rule on our list, Altium defines uh, the trace width design rule as basically this is what defines the width of tracks placed on copper signal layers. So what that looks like is it's referring to the width of these bad boys right here. These little copper lines that go that connect interconnect pads and kind of go along our little PCB for us. So if we click on this trace, for example, if you can you can see right here its width is set to 10 mils so if we go into the design rules um, and we take a look in the width rules right this is in the routing section and then the width section of the routing section so we can see i have my minimum width set to five mils and then my maximum width set to a thousand mils and then preferred width set to 10 mils so let's talk about how i actually set that rule and what i ended up doing was I went, all I did was I went to, I just Googled PCB fabrication house or something right here. And then I found this one, uh, it's called like, like Sierra circuits, I think. And so what I did is I went to their capability section and then I clicked on their rigid PCB section in their capability section, because what a rigid PCB is, it's like the most classical example of a PCB that everyone, it's what everyone thinks of when they hear a PCB, they have some really interesting technologies with like flexible designs. And stuff like that so that's like way out of the scope of this video we're only worried about um you know rigid pcb stuff right so if you look down here in their section um this is where they show all of their actual capabilities so we'll be referring to this table a whole lot for a lot of the design rules that we set 
So I think, okay, so down here, right? Um, I've already looked at this, of course, so I'm vaguely familiar, but just take your time, read through it. You can actually even message people on this uh, website here. If it's in business hours, they'll get back to you very fast, like within seconds. Um, so you can just ask them like, oh, what is your blankety blank for this? And they'll, they'll tell you. So a uh, very useful tool right there. So um, right here in this little row, they have min, trace, and space. So what that basically refers to as the minimum trace width rule, right? So for here, it says they can uh, achieve a minimum trace width of four mils. I actually have in a section standard advanced micro. So we want to play around in the standard section, especially for now, because uh, what happens is this is really, really expensive, right? Um, and so this is like your more typical call. Like this will add a whole bunch of cost to your board if you if you start going down to this small of a trace and i'll say it's definitely unnecessary especially for the projects we're doing right now it's it's really not that important so just stick with with the four mils and with the four mils number right you see i, I chose set mine to five because remember there's like a theme if you if you remember from those uh, that e projects video i talked about is it's all about uh not operating at not operating at the actual physical limit limits of your your components or your you know making sure your design has a lot of headroom is is like a is a key theme when it comes to engineering so whenever i see the minimum trace of four mils right i picked five well that's all you're like oh that's only one mil difference it's actually like well that's a 25 percent uh you know amount of headroom that we're giving the fabrication house in order to make our stuff right so that's why i think that that's a good way to say it so that's pretty much um how you'd run through the, the first rule. Actually, let me, what I want to do also is show you an example of this design rule changing and how it reflects on the board. It's not what I want to click. So you click design rules and we'll click go here. And what we want to do is we want to click 25 mil and then we'll click 50 because it'll throw back an error. Or uh, if, if your preferred is not between these two bounds, right? So apply it, okay. And right away we get error markers right here. And if we do a design rule check, um, It'll throw back, it'll come at us with the actual error says width constraint, right? Um, then we click on that. Let me see. Right, so it goes right here to width constraint, right? So um, that's perfect. That's pretty much exactly how the design rule wizard works. So, or I, sh I should say like a design rule check and that's how your, that's what it'll look like if your design is not meeting the design rules that you set. Let's just go ahead and reset this. I set it to five and prefer to 10. And real quick, I'll talk about the preferred and max width. So in this case, I have max width set to a thousand, but really there's no, there's, there should be no max width setting for this um, because I mean, what is the difference for, for in terms of manufacturing, at least there is no, uh, what's the difference between a really, really wide trace and a copper pour. And I would say there isn't one and manufacturing, you know, fab houses can manufacture your copper pour as wide as you want it basically. So a thousand mils, that's a fine number set. And then with preferred width, um, this really, this number really doesn't matter either. It's sort of like the default width that your trace will start out as if you just go into the interactive routing um, mode. And like I said, this number doesn't really matter because eventually what we'll do is we'll set up templates for our actually preferred widths. Uh, think of it like snap grid templates. We'll toggle between various different widths. Um, and so we'll have like a whole table to choose from. So the preferred width will end up really mattering at all because you could use, uh, you know, various, you could use a 10 mil trace, a 15 mil trace, 25 mil trace. Um, you could use a seven mil trace, something like that. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Um, so yeah, so we'll just go ahead and click apply and we'll set that back to normal. And so that'll basically cover the first rule that we'll set. Um, and basically I'll just kind of go through these rules incrementally and show you what they all kind of mean. So uh, yeah, thanks.